Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Ingenious ECW230 Wi-Fi 6 access point. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put it in the description below. So the first thing we'll do, like always, we'll take a look at what's in the box and at the access point, and then we'll get this adopted and then do some speed tests and iperf tests. All right, so here we could see the ECW230. We could see at the top that there would be a power light indicator, a LAN indicator, a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz. If we take a look on the back, there is some mounting options. So you could screw into the wall and then hang this directly just with this access point. On the bottom, it has a reset button. Then we have our LAN PoE port, which is capable of 2.5 gigabits per second. And then we have a DC 12 volt in. It also comes with a couple other mounting brackets and some screws and anchors. There is nothing else that came in the packaging. This was it. So let's go ahead, look at some of the specs and then get this adopted. The ECW230 is a 4x4 multi-user MIMO indoor access point. It supports up to 2400 megabits per second in the 5 gigahertz band and 1148 megabits per second in the 2.4 gigahertz band. It has a 2.5 ethernet gigabit interface and it supports 802.3AT or 48 volt PoE. It also supports OFDMA and it has target wait time for saving power. I couldn't find a price for this access point on their webpage, and I do want to thank Ingenious for sending me this access point. I did a search on Amazon.com, and I did find one for $365. It may be a little more or a little less than this, but we'll see with our speed test and our iperf test if this access point is worth the price. Now I have the access point powered up and on a ingenious test network. Let's go ahead and get it adopted. So the first thing we need to do, we need to sign into the ingenious cloud portal. If you don't have an account already, you would sign up in the right hand corner. So I'm going to put in my email address and password to get into the controller. All right, now we're into the ingenious cloud controller and it says issue detected. That's because the one ingenious switch I have is unplugged and you could see that right here that it's showing that it's offline. I'm not gonna be re-adding that in here right now. Um, we'll just get the access point into this controller and then create an SSID. So what we need to do, we need to go to the bottom left-hand corner and then go to inventory and license. Then we need to click register device. This is gonna ask you for the serial number and we can find that on the back of the access point. And this serial number is case sensitive and then we'll press register. Now it's successfully added the device, we'll press done. And this is gonna take a few minutes for it to join the cloud controller. All right, now the access point is in our cloud controller and we could see it right here that we have one access point online. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the access point. And it's gonna show us a few things. It will show us the name, the serial number, the MAC address, the model number, the channels that are currently on. So we're on channel three and channel 40, the WAN IP address it's connected to, the LAN IP address and the clients. We'll also see the firmware version in the last update and it will show us our mesh mode. We could go into more details if we go to the end and press details and we'll see the IP address, the access points getting the subnet mask and the gateway. We could also show the topology, which we won't have any. I just have the AP connected. We could turn on and off the LED light. And if we needed to locate this access point, we could turn the LED blinking on. On the right hand side, we could see the real time meter. So our CPU, our memory, our throughput for the 2.4 and the throughput for the five gigahertz bands. There's some SSID information, which we haven't created any SSIDs yet. We could see the throughput for the SSIDs. And below we could see radios, and this is where we would configure the radios. So if we wanted to click on the five gigahertz band and edit it, we would click under the lock. And then we could set the channel. So right now it's set to auto, but we could do between 36 and 48 or 149 to 161. We could change the power, the minimum bit rate, the clients, the channel width, which is set to 80 right now. And I'm gonna leave that on 80. And then we could discard 11 A, B, and G. So I'll leave everything on auto and let's go ahead and create an SSID for this access point. So how we create an SSID for this access point, we're gonna to wanna to go over to the settings wheel and then press SSID. 
Right now we could see that there's no SSID created. So I'm gonna add an SSID and I'm gonna call this Wi-Fi 6 test. We're gonna enable this SSID, we're not gonna hide it and we're gonna have it broadcasting both the 2.4 and the five gigahertz bands. Here we could select our security type. So we could have open, we could have OWE, WPA2 pre-shared key, which we're gonna use. And I'll type in test one, two, three, four. If the access point supports WPA3, click that here. If we wanted to put this access point on a specific VLAN, we could specify that here. Right now it's just on the default VLAN. We could also do bandwidth limit control. So we could enable this and we could do it on a per client or per SSID basis. You could do a captive portal. We could do a splash page and we could set a schedule for the Wi-Fi, and we could also set access control. I'll press apply and this SSID will be created. My phone is now connected to the new network we created and the internet coming into my house is one gigabit by one gigabit. Also, the house is about 2000 square feet with an upstairs, a middle floor and a basement and we'll be taking speed tests and iPerf tests from every level. This first testing is in the office and I'm pretty much right beside the access point. So let's see what the speeds are like. So we're getting 619 megabits per second download and 551 upload. I'm using an iPhone 11 to do these tests. Let's do the iPerf test. So first we're gonna test the download with five streams. And we're getting an average of 632 megabits per second. Let's test the upload. And the upload we're getting 597 megabits per second. This next test is from the middle floor of the house. Let's see the speeds this access point gets. And we're getting 494 megabits per second down and 422 up, which is pretty good one floor away. Let's go ahead and do the iPerf test. And the average download we're getting is 365 megabits per second. Let's test the upload. And the average upload we're getting is 360 megabits per second. Now we're testing in the basement, which is two floors below where the access point is. And let's see the speed test results. And we're getting 147 megabits per second download and 42 upload. Let's see the iPerf tests. And our average download iPerf was 37 megabits per second. Let's see the upload. And the average upload is 42 megabits per second. Final thoughts on this access point. I think it does pretty well if you're only a floor away from it. Once you get down to about two floors, the range just isn't there. I do like the fact that it comes with the 2.5 gigabit interface. Another thing, I tried to get it to adopt into my sky key, but I couldn't. I had to try to manage it through their cloud controller. I'm not too sure if it's just my sky key or if you can't control it by the sky key altogether. If you guys have any questions about this access point, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.